Early morning start. Golf lesson. Devon. Dan Hendrickson. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to Churston Golf Club, welcome to the relatively new home of Dan Hendrickson and uh, today we're going to be down in the fitting and the training area it's going to be indoors, it's such a shame, it's a beautiful day out here today, it's going to be very hot so if you remember rightly, if you watched recently you've seen the driver video that I did which has changed my driver dramatically and um, gave me a lot, a lot more confidence but right now I'm struggling with irons. I'm really struggling. I have no preconceived idea what I'm going to do when I set up for the ball. I have no consistent miss either way. All I know is I'm not hitting them very well. I'm just a little bit confused, I guess. So hopefully Dan's going to just give me some new, new confidence and uh, we'll see what happens, yeah? So it's a fly on the wall video. Please enjoy. Hope you learn something too. Just have yeah, a few so swings, let's see what you're, uh, let's just get you warmed up. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, I couldn't even tell you if there was a certain right or wrong with, with the irons right now. They're all over the place. So. Yeah. Let's just look at that one shot that you've just hit there, okay? Okay. So um, we've got a, a path of one degree. Yeah. Okay. So swing path at one degree. The face of the path at 0 0.7 close to that, um, what, sorry, one degree out to in. Okay, so coming across the ball just a fraction, which is, yeah. which is, Okay, I'm fine. You remember I always say that two degree rule. Um, and you've got a path that's slightly close to that, but, but m minimal, minimal, okay? Um, strike factor there is a little bit in the heel, millimeter and yeah. eight millimeters in the heel, eight millimeters low. So we're catching it consistently a little low. A couple of shots you hit there were a bit thin, yeah. a couple heavy, a bit toppy, those sorts of things going all, all consistently low in the face. Yeah. All right. Um, Obviously, carry distance seven iron, 120 yards. Yeah. How does that compare? Um, my, the only other kind of gap test I've ever done, eight iron was one, two, five, and then the seven iron was probably one. Yeah. Three, one, okay, two, so loss losing a bit of yardage there as well. Yeah. Okay, so possibly the fact that the speed has dropped down um, from the club head speed at 69 mile an hour. So maybe you've lost a little bit of speed from yeah. there. If we come over here, right, can you see what's kind of happening here? Okay, so this is your, this is your, let's go back to setup. So setup position, um, ball position just a fraction back in the stance, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump on you about that at this moment in time. Okay. Um, lines are pretty good. Everything looks okay for an iron, doesn't it? Hands nice and forward. Um, posture looks pretty tidy there, John. So everything's looking pretty good. Okay. Take the club into this position on the way here. Love the fact that you've got that club face pointing down at the ground. It okay. looks like it's in a, a really nice position there. So happy with that. Positive. And also looking at the way in which your, your arms are staying nice and connected to the body. That club is parallel to the ground. It's coming back in a nice position, but the club kind of pointing down at the target line, which is kind of what I like to see. Okay. So positives. Yeah, yeah. Really good stuff here. Okay, taking it to the top of the swing. It's good. Okay. Like there's lots of positives. You've maintained that club face position at the top of the position. You've got a lovely left wrist position. The left arm position is in a place where it's kind of level with your shoulders. Okay. I like that. Um, and you've got made a really good turn off the ball. Nice spine angle position there. Okay. Lots of good, good yeah, yeah. things happening. Yeah. Considering in, the fact I think everything's a mess. Well, it's, it's it certainly not. isn't at that point. Okay. okay. Where you talk about the mess, when you start to come on down, the first, you're going to see that the, the, um, 
the way in which the club comes down is that you're pulling it, pulling down on it with your arms. Okay, so you're just going to bring that club back down. Your lower half is basically stopped. Yeah. And this is where the problems are are happening. So from here, the lead is with your arms on the way down. I want the lead to be with your kind of hips on the way down. Okay. And then as you start to come down through here, you've now because you're leading a little bit with your arms, you've got that club kind of just it's kind of coming through your shoulder line there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of want to see that shaft just laid down a fraction and I think if you lead with your hips a bit more it will probably automatically create that but because you're pulling down on the club this way it's it's wanting to sort of stand that shaft up a little bit um, as you start to come down so coming down into the ball now you've got that club outside of your hands on the way down yeah. here okay. I kind of want it more in in back into the way that it was at, on the way back yeah um, and then as you come through um, no real transfer of weight into your left side yeah. you're kind of you've got a massive kink in your arm as it kind of comes through so everything is collapsed up here yeah. and it's only collapsed because you're trying to make room it's the same issue as we did with the driver but there's no room for the body to get around here um, correct mm. so what we've got to try and do is see if we can get those hips to fire a bit quicker yeah and get that club extending through on the way through. Let's get some more power in you. Yeah, so a better, better transition in the body, in the hips, and then that should free a bit more with a bit left. So if we can get you to fire your hips just that little bit quicker, get everything transferring, turning through, get that weight transferring into your left side, it's like throwing a ball. So it's like throwing a ball, okay? okay? If you want to get some weight transfer, if you want to throw that ball just that little bit further, you've got to get the weight transferring through. Okay, so if you're back here and you and you're firing from here, and then you know there's no there's no weight, there's no power in that shot, is there? As I throw to, because all my weight is on my back foot. If I then come through and throw my whole body into the shot, then I'm going to get that ball to go a little bit further out there. What you're doing is you're coming through into impact. You kind of just stat here, so you're trying to make space, so your arms will collapse up because you're trying to help that ball get it in the air. Yeah. We've got to drive the body. And what, what you're trying to do in the golf swing, let's grab this club here. So th kind of think about the golf swing as you, on the back swing, think about it as from the head, club head starts the swing, okay? And then it works up through. So club head starts the swing, then the, then the grip then moves, the hands move, the arms start to move, the shoulders are moving, and then it sort of works into the chest, then it works down into the kind of um, torso area here, into the hips, and then the kind of the hips are the last things that kind of get you into that position at the top. Then on the downswing, you've got to reverse it. Okay. So you fire with the hips, then the torso starts to turn, then the, sh then the chest starts to turn, then the shoulders, and then the last thing that kind of comes into the golf ball is the head. Sure. So think about it in that way. Start off with the head working down to your hips, and then on the way through, reverse that. Hips fire, then everything starts to work its way down. You do it in complete the reverse move. Okay. What you're doing, you're getting it lovely to the top of the swing, okay. and then you're doing the same as what you were doing on the way back. You were starting with the club head, starting with your hands, down into your hands, yeah. then down into your arms, then down into your shoulders, and the last thing that goes through is your hips. In, in my head, I'm trying to repeat the same thing, so it's in, yeah, up and back, the same thing, but like I said, it's actually in reverse. It's, it's in actually reverse. in reverse. Yeah. So you've got to then get it to the top of the swing, and, and whenever I do these drills, and you know I'm doing drills at the moment in my swing, but you'll watch me... Um, you watch me and I close, I'll close my eyes because I need, I need the outside elements away from what I'm lo looking at or thinking about. It just allows me to get into more of a sense of where my body is. So if I close my eyes, I can then fire. What does it feel like to get those hips to go? Okay, what does that feel like? Then, then the stomach, then up into the chest, then the shoulders. And by this point, the arms have not even really done anything. They're only bumping around because I'm moving everything down the bottom here. So get it to the top, start, keep my eyes closed at the top, start to lead, get that feeling, and then as I'm coming through now, 
you can see that the last thing coming into the ball is, is here, but look at how much my hips have rotated yeah. through. Everything's gone. My weight has transferred onto my left side. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right Without right a ball at the moment, just yep. take the club, you know, just close your eyes and take the club to the top of your swing. Okay. And then now start thinking about your lower, your lower half goes, so it starts to twist. It's bigger, isn't it? Yeah, try not to stand upright as you do it. Just keep maintaining your posture and then lead with the hips. And then, yeah, and then, it, and then that's it, you see? Because what you're doing auto automatically, take it to the top of the swing, you're not allowing this club to go. Go on then, go, go start moving with the hips. There you go, there you go. Look at this club. Like, I'm not even putting pressure on it. You're just holding. Yeah, yeah. So you're holding this club head almost like against the wall for as long as you can. Okay. And then at the last minute, keep going, keep going, pull on it, pull on it, and then that starts to then work. Then that yeah, yeah, yeah. But it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that you've got to throw your arms into it. It should naturally, if everything's gone, it's just a natural pull through with the arms as you come through the shop. But in my you know, simplified thought then, golf, golf, hitting a golf ball is mainly about the body. Uh, you know, connect, connection is everything, connection is everything to the body, arms is just no. Arms and arms are there for the ride. Yeah, that's it. They're there for the ride. They're there for the ride, but they're also the feel. You know, you're sent in here in your hands. This is all you feel. Okay. So you've got to get the sense of what you know. Well, my problem has always been just. I mean, got a lot of body, and obviously we've discussed that before to get it moving. But it's never used enough. Never yeah. pointing enough in the right direction. Never getting round enough. It's always about guiding everything here. Well, because trying to work it around. You've got to remember, you've got to remember that it's a natural thing for us male, male, everything we do is all top half, you know, we, we, pump, we punch, we climb, we do yeah. all these things, everything is with our arms and hands and top half chest, okay? That's why you see most guys, they're quite big up the top yeah, yeah. and they're very small down the bottom sort of thing, you know, so it's, it's trying to get the sense of, um, you know, let that control that as best you can let's get control of of these parts here this is okay. where your power comes from yeah yeah but it's not in the small muscles in your hands and your arms that's not what's powering the the engine the engine is in is all in in here yeah. in the hips okay that's what fires if that can fire quicker use the ground forces all of these sorts of things you're only going to do that you can't use the ground forces with your hands and arms yeah. You can use the ground forces with your hips and legs. And I should understand this because when I was in school, I was I was the field sports athletics yeah. champion. Um, you know, discus, shot put, all those things about mobility, it's about Absolutely. your body. Discus and then went to martial arts. So then it's about it's not about hitting like that. It's hitting through your whole body for the yeah. energy going right through. Yeah. Golf should is the same. It. Golf should be the same. If you think about shot put. I mean, you've got to. You've got. You know, everything is. It's all is, the legs and the body. It's coming down to up, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, that yeah like the last thing that does anything like this doesn't do much other than just the it's power has come from here and then you just stretch the arm yeah that's not creating the power this this, this is the power. that's yeah, yeah. what's creating the power it's the same in the golf swing it's back there it's there you drive from here and the rest comes through as it, as, as you come through the shot okay. as the speed in, increases have a few practice swings again, just getting yeah. a sense of what does that feel like. And remember, try and keep that club head on the wall on behind you on the way all the way down, and the last thing it comes through is the club head. Okay. That's new. <laughs> Falling forward is new. People will all know that. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I'm. I don't know, it's not perfect, but I feel like I'm facing where it's got to go. Well. Can I hit one? Let's talk about perfect just for a second. Okay. I've not looked at this swing as of yet, okay? So okay. we're all looking at this together. So 
So setups, all setups are pretty good. Yeah. Still a bit back. Yeah, still back. Keep, keep doing that. That's fine for a minute. Again, look at the takeaway. Still liking the takeaway position. Okay. Okay, getting it to the top. Nice. Interestingly longer, so something's triggered you. Probably because yeah. the ball's not there. Okay, That's yeah, quite not common. about the ball. Yeah. yeah, so, and then on the way down. Instantly, that club head is now, or that shaft, as you come down through the ball. If I just chuck that into there. Okay. Let's take this to the top of the swing. And down... So that one's sitting there in through your bicep now as it starts to come down through. Yeah. Whereas if you take this one, uh, feels like it's kind of been thrown over. Well, uh, yeah, because you've, you've, you're leading now with your lower half, whereas in this one you're leading with your top half. So yeah. look at where that shaft is now pointing down through your shoulder. Yeah. Whereas now we've got it low of the shoulder and more into the bicep. Yeah, yeah. Which is a real key area that you want to try and get that club into into that tight into that position because you know if you think about on the way back as you take it away, you've got it in through the bicep. Yeah. You've not got it up above your shoulder. No, no. On the way down. Back down through the bicep and yep. look at where that club head is now on the way down compared to where you were yeah. on the way down. Massive, isn't it? Look at the difference there. Massive. So, and like I said to you there, you know, all I wanted you to do is get that, that club into the same position as where it was yep. on the way back. Well, there it's outside your hat, it's over here. Yep. Whereas now you've got it working now down through. So, as you come into the ball, it's trapped in a position there. As you come in. Yeah. Okay, so okay. that's your impact position. Now, okay, what do we pick out from there? From this angle, look at the foot. Yeah. Difference in your foot is completely planted on the floor on the left side and is now way up. So that means that there's body transfer going yeah. on. To okay. the point where I actually do actually fall forward slightly. When if, the power just goes through. If so we... Like I'm walking forward. Uh, let me just put that one over there. So this is your new one. Um, this is your original one. So original over here. We look at it from this angle. <coughs> okay. Yeah. You start to see. There's a serious lean going on now. Well, yeah. This leg's dead straight. This one's now going this way. Yeah. It's it's kind of bent this way so there's the hips are driving and they're driving you this way which is what we want. It literally wanted. looks like I'm going to jump sideways at the moment. Yeah well that just doesn't go anywhere. Still a hint of a scoop. Yeah yeah. But look at the difference now and, and I want to see those handle that handle forward a little bit but that's okay. something we you, again we can talk about that but like there's no weight transfer here. No. This you've driven. Everything's driving into the shot, so you're going to pick up naturally pick up more speed. You're 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 still wanting to collapse everything up into yeah. this position, okay. which we've got to feel like we're extending, and that's the next little bit. But look at the difference in the leg positions. Look at the heel completely off the ground, still flat on the ground there. Yeah, we've we've changed everything from the hips down. We've changed that yeah. dramatically in just one thought process. One thought process. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, a couple, just a couple of practice swings again, just getting that sense of what does that feel like. Good. Okay, as you come through this time, I want you to really extend those arms towards the target. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's it's very athletic, John. <laughs> yeah, I could, if I'm shot potting, I just fall off the front of the ring, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Don't steer it, just no, let it go through. Really no, I don't care what happens to the ball at this moment in time. You actually felt so much freer. I don't, you know, I don't know what happened with it, but it just felt 
we, we said it before, it kind of feels easier. Yeah. Like there's no effort going in that. Okay. So what I just want to show you now is uh, the increase. And bearing in mind, it's just, you know, you, you've, you've warmed up. Yeah, we've yeah. got you to this position. Okay. Your swing speed, your clubhead speed has gone from 69 mile an hour to 76 mile an hour. Yeah. But it felt in more control well, than it was when it was in the 60s. Yeah. Your, um, your swing path has gone from one degree out to in to now two degrees in to out. Yeah. So that's shifted. Um, but the main focus there is the fact that we, what we know is happening is that you're increasing speed. Sure. I mean, for you to pick up seven mile an hour in an iron swing, if I could pick up seven mile an hour in a drive, you know, if I could pick up seven mile an hour, I'd be hitting it, oh, well, I'd be hitting a lot longer. Yeah. A lot longer. I mean, so we haven't quite got the strike yet, so our efficiency's no. down. Um, so even to release my body enough to increase the speed, it's got to help. Correct. Um, I, we haven't discussed this on the intro uh, yet, because we haven't filmed the intro the way yeah. editing works. Uh, but my problem today was getting to the green, as we said that before on the driver. The driver's now further. Yeah. Just need to get closer to the green. I'm doing okay on the greens. It's just getting that distance, making it closer, less yeah. shots to get there. Well, you, you, we've got to get you out of the steering mode. Yeah. So I, I have this motto that I stick with, which is lose control to gain control. Yeah. So you've got to lose, get the sense of losing control of the golf swing. And I'm kind of doing that with the driver now. I'm kind of just yeah. letting it go. Let know? it go, because the more you steer it, the more you hold onto it, the more tension you create. Actually, the more tension you create in your body, think about this, you're going to create potential for injuries. Sure. If you're traveling at 70 mile an hour, if your body's moving at, at the speed, that sort of speed, or 50 mile an hour, like something's, if you tense up, you're going to be, you're going to be in yeah, more, I'm, more I'm, I'm, I'm not trouble. I'm not person body wise right now, we're working on that, but yeah, I do get little, little tweaks, little pulls, you know, because yeah. So, same again, really extend those arms through though for me, okay, as you come through the shaft. Again. Oh, I got that one on it felt like it was all right. <laughs> it was a lovely strike, wasn't it? It sounded right anyway. Okay. Yeah, so again. I want a bigger extension into the ball though this time. I want you to really feel like you're throwing that club down the line towards the target. I couldn't throw it much more down the line, I don't think. Okay. Feel on that one? It's just repetitive, it just feels like I'm not putting so much effort in anymore. Well, like the body's not feeling tight, like it's not feeling that I'm having to put any power into things. So that's it's more about the movement than actually any kind of stopping and, and pushing. Yeah, so, so that time done, you've gone, um, you've maintained your club head speed at 76 mile an hour. Yeah. So going through the shot a lot quicker than yeah, what yeah. you were. Yeah. Okay, but the good thing about that one is that the strike improved, so that sure. means your efficiency went up, the efficiency in the shot. Well, your carry's just gone up, um, what were you earlier? 120? 125. You said that, you said that was great. Right, 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 yeah. Well, you're at carry at 136 now. Yeah. So, increase of clubhead speed, increase that in efficiency, as in I get the strike better, and then you'll start to see your ball speed go up and start to see your distance inc in improve. And mentally, um, it's also understanding to me that I just, if I just go for things, yeah. it's going to be better. Because irrespective of whether I have a wild one, which I'm yeah. going to get in my level, they're still going to be further. They're still going to be closer to the greens. Yeah. Even if they're a bit wider, but they're still going to be closer. Yeah. And, 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 Not and people, there might be people now watching saying, well, you know, the angle of attack is still a little yeah. bit up. And uh, the lie angle is not quite well, right. We're not working on perfection right now. We're just no. We're just, just trying to get trying to get a few start. key points right that's going to help you get that ball a little bit further down there and get you and get you on the straight and narrow just yeah. that little bit more as well. People who watch the channel, they they watch the driver video. They know that when I'm, when they see me on the videos that I'm filming afterwards, 
all right, it's not always exactly with the foot up and all these kind of things, yeah. but it's so much yeah. with more freedom now yeah. and more bravery. And so, that's what I need to do right now. Again, right, so there's, there's a couple of other areas, like we could pick up your uh, ball speed even quicker again in, yeah. in, 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 in a minute, all right, um, by delivering just a little bit of a better angle of attack on the ball. Okay. Okay, so get you a little bit steeper on the ball, yeah. okay? I don't, I don't feel like I ever hit down onto the ball. No, but and it's, you can see that because you're scoopy, it's not like your hands are behind. Bit, yeah. Those are the little things that we're going to have to look at and maybe give you something to take away and work on. Okay. But if we can increase your angle of attack down on the ball, okay, we can start to increase a little bit of spin loft on it. Yeah. So we can start to increase a little bit of spin on the golf ball. But the other thing is that, you know, in reality, why did we hit an eight iron shorter than a seven iron? The reality of that is because we deliver more loft with an eight iron than we do a seven iron. The, the, the change in club head speed is going to be small, sure. but because we're delivering more loft into it, um, it's going to have more deflection up the club face. So if you, have, if you have something that comes at it and hits it solid, or you deflect off the side of something, yeah. one's going to create more ball speed than the other. Okay? The deflection is what kills the ball in such, okay. in such a way. Well. What I'm looking for is I'm trying to give you, with a 7-iron, ideally I want to get you down and around a 29 degree impact position. Sure. Okay. okay. If I can get you down to around 29, at the moment you're at 39 degrees. Yeah, which is probably worse than an 8-iron. Like yeah. Well, well it's, it's, just too, it's just basically too much loft yeah. coming into the shot, which is ultimately giving you a little bit too much launch. but. You've got so much, you're, you're delivering like a nine iron. Yeah. And that's giving you lots of deflection. So you're losing ball speed because your loft is so, so high. Yeah. We can get that loft down, which is handle press forward. Yeah. Hit down into the golf ball, those sorts of things. It's going to help you de loft it slightly. Okay. And push that ball out there just that little bit faster. All makes sense. Always does that. Okay, but the main focus at this point is just to keep working on what we've just been talking about, extending well, I think those arms. You can't control. fix everything in one no, lesson. You just no. sort one thing out. Work on that. As long as you're aware of it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that train. Put you right that. It's great, and it's like Mickey Mouse turning up every day. It's beautiful. John, what a difference. And it'd be hard for people to uh, understand what I mean by that, but the sound is just completely different. It's a, it's a, it's a proper hit. It's not scuffy. It's it just it's feels more confident. Yeah. It's like I know I've got it in me. <laughs> it's just getting it out. Scoopy on that one, but again, not bad. See, that's strange. If I didn't feel I scoop that, I felt I yeah. tried to put it forward. Just what your impression is in your head, what's actually happening. Yeah. So that was better. Um, you got your cover speed still at 76 mile an hour. Your efficiency, so your strike would have been a bit thin and a bit healy, so that's probably why you dropped drop ball speed. Okay. But your loft that time looked 31.5. It felt like I kind of tried to keep it yeah. a bit weird, but kind of kept it straighter as yeah. opposed to. That's better. Yeah. So that felt wrong as I was coming down. So would I should I have pulled out of that? Or just let it go? I think at that speed you're probably gonna do yourself some damage to yeah. stop. So Okay. As you start to come down through the shot, you see yeah. how we're leaking a little bit out to the mm -hmm. right hand side. If you get this, if you if you release the club under your hand this way, yeah. you're actually just going to open the face up. I think that's what I think. I'm trying to, to what I've been in my head. I'm trying to straighten that club face up. All I'm doing is, is like I said, releasing it early, but not yeah. moving the hands forward. You're, you're kind of like here, yeah. Which is actually by the time you come into impact there, you all that effort and power that you've been putting in on the way yeah. down is now being lost a little bit but you, you, you're still wanting to come back here and scoop into this position okay. 
and what we're trying to get the sense of doing is you know is is kind of that position okay does that make sense so you're yeah. trying to keep that handle just feel like it's pressed forward and then it allows you to turn up and through the shot from there so okay. you can see there that once i've got that position there i'm trying not to really release it again i'm just going to hold that position hold it down hold it down and turn into that place there so you can see that i'm not only de-lofting the club, getting it into a more um, de-lofted position, but I'm actually just squaring the face up. Yeah. As soon as you do that, you open the face up. If I do that, you're keeping the face neutral and pushing it towards Even the Even when you were just discussing that, I was thinking, well, I'll just want to do this bit, and I kind of forgot this holding it back against the wall. In, in that swing, it suddenly that wasn't part of it anymore. Yeah. That was the important. Yeah, and, and this is it, isn't it? It's like a jigsaw puzzle. You're trying to get all the pieces together and then actually bring it all together as one. I suppose in the end, when you've done it thousands of times or whatever, you kind of you don't even really think about all those little pieces. No, anymore. it's not. No, you're, you're creating a neuro pathway. Yeah. Your brain needs re repeat, 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 repeat. Okay. Like you driving down here today, you yeah. have thought about driving, changing no, no. gear, and all the things that you do because you've created neuro pathways that allow you to be able to just switch on and switch off. In golf, is no different. You just keep repeating, and you switch on, and you switch off. Okay. You, but you've got to create that neuro pathway by doing repeat exercises. Okay. So, as a sense, as a sense. As you set up to this bag, okay. um, you don't need a bag to do this. We can, I'll show you a little drill against the wall in a minute. But if I set up into this position, you set up as if you're going to hit the bag. Okay. Okay. So do you want, do you want me to set up? To yeah. There? Set up. Set up to the. Set up. I'll move the bag into position to you. Okay. okay. So if you now take it to the top of your swing and start working your way down. Okay. Come on down to the bag. Okay. Good transfer the weight through but I want you just to press against the bag so you're pressing against me okay keep pushing into it pushing into it now can you see where your handle is pressed forward yeah yeah that's the that's the position that you're trying to get into in my head that's just dramatic that's just so much different yeah where before I was like yeah, oh, back here yeah massive. yeah okay, okay. so yeah. now do it with a bit of speed and actually in it's called an impact bag so don't be afraid to go into the bag itself oh i'm just afraid of doing that you're trying <laughs> to hit my kneecaps just a little pitchy shot to get you going that's it okay so yeah. but in order for you to not hurt yourself you've got to, it's like chopping an axe into wood and yeah you know you, you're not going to let the axe go you're going to hold on to it so you you know Brace for impact. Yeah, and that's what you're trying to do. I have to stop wearing a glove soon because the grip is just it's starting to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah suddenly more power in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, same again. So just impact into it. So as you come down through, just try and hold and stop. Good. Yeah. Hold and stop is there. Yeah. Much better. Okay. The other drill that you can do. Um, and a friend of mine got me doing this kind of drill the other day. It's something that um, you're, um, you know, think about your right hand position at this point. Okay. okay. So right hand position, and you're going to stand about a grip away from the grip of the club, away from the wall. Okay. Okay. Setting up, and again, you can just keep your left hand. I always put my left hand behind the back, and then can you see my hand? I'm trying to keep keep this position. Yep. So it's going to stay almost like cupped a little bit on the way back. So I'm here and then stretch into the wall. Yep, flattening it. Yeah. Yep. And then drop, drop another grip away. Yeah. Okay, what we don't want to do is this. Yep. We're going to feel that position a little bit further away. And that position, get the fingers to the wall from there. Yeah. And that will hold that loft off the club as we something you can just do in your living room or whatever. Do that at home and, and then you club. grab a club and, and and then do the same thing, but your your focus is the right hand position, just trying to feel like that is you know, where's that? Is that in is that in that position as I'm coming through? Yeah. Where is that on the club? Holding on to the club as I come through the shot. Can I maintain that position as I come into the shot and then stretch through Okay. Through there. So and push this bag away but you know again you can do this John and I'll I do this a little bit sometimes in some of my drills that you can you know when you're just 
with your club in your hand, you can just have your left hand in this position, just keep that club away from you, and then just do get the sense of that. Hold that position, yeah. just like we were doing against the ball. Two hands on the club, close your eyes, get that sense of doing that. What does that feel like to keep that hinge there? And then turn through and hold. Yeah? So, yeah, so practice is all about a sense of feeling. Yeah. A sense of where you feel things are Absolutely. in relation to the swing and then... Yeah. There we go. Total distance nearly 150 yards now, so we know we're, we know we're making, for by seven. Yeah, we, we know we're making headway. It's 138 in the carry. Yeah. Uh, club, head, club head back up at 76 mile an hour. Efficiency that time. Efficiency. Well, I'm, I'm happy with the club speed because that's the kind of feel I'm, I'm, if I've hit the consistent speed on everything. Yeah. I work from that. Yeah. Well, again. Like, think about this, so 76 mile an hour is about where I want you, yeah. okay? You've got a bit of, think about the, the way you're feeling right now, you've got a bit of puff, you've got yeah, a bit, yeah. you've, got, you've made a bit of an effort. Yeah, but get fits are all, they'll get past. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thing, but, yeah. Um, but your efficiency now is at 132, so that means that you're just slightly up in your efficiency, which is now, that's the exciting bit, because yeah. now we can see, well, what's the potential of what this is doing. Sure. Uh, angle of attack around zero, yeah. so we've still got work to do on that in the future. Okay. Path zero, zero point three. Um, face zero point five. So the tiny numbers. The ball's yeah. not going to move a lot when you've got okay. numbers no, that sorry, close. Not, not moving really a lot. Really yeah. um, but the, the, the great down. thing, the loft is down. So yes, you could probably look at the video and say it's not perfect yet. But the facts are, you've gone from around thirty-nine degrees yeah, in the loft dramatically to that, to now thirty, thirty point six or thirty-one, should we say? Okay. Um, Strike a little bit low and a little bit out of the toe, but nothing okay. made six mils, so nothing major. But the proof is in what you're creating here, the proof is in your carry distance, which yeah. has gone up to now 30, 138, total distance 148. Four, four, one so, yeah. just off the top of my head, you know, you know if you're playing probably 13, 10, 13 yards at the moment, it's gone from that nine to. Eight to seven and a half, maybe. Then I'm going to work it down at some point. Correct, and I'm not saying that you know I, we've talked about this in the past. You know, with you getting more through the ball yeah. and all these sorts of things. So when you've done gapping and you said your A time is around the 125 mark, yeah. like that, that would make sense to me. That's what I've always guessed. Yeah. Like, well, because that was the one every time I did it, it yeah. kind of it got to 125. It was a marker in the range where it landed the ball every time on it. So, so although I don't remember the other ones. If I'm looking on the course now, I'll go like 120, 125, that's my eight. And if yeah. you're slightly further back, I'll go seven. It's yeah. literally that get kind of guessing situation now. Uh, and, and we know that if we can get this right, we know that you should be around the 135 to 140 mark with your set mark. Yeah. In a carry and distance. Carry, and it's carry, carry distance, distance yeah. yeah. Then you've got to factor that into golf course to golf course, to season to season, you know, sure. in. In, in what your total distance is going to be with that club from there. But first and foremost of what we've done here, this is, a, this is the key ingredient, this is the key start to all of this. You can't be, like I said before, you've got to lose control to gain control, you can't be holding back, just no. plodding that ball into position. You've got this, this key, key ingredients that you've got to put into the swing, to enable you to get that ball to compress out there and just go that little I, I almost feel that was what the lesson I needed really was was to allow myself the the bravery, the relaxation, the freedom to actually the confidence to go, just let it go. Yeah, and I think I think having you know, and that's for everybody watching this video, yeah. is that 
that's that's sometimes that's sometimes the beauty of having just whether even if it's 20 minutes with the pro or half an hour with the pro whatever it is you want to do just that reassurance it's like the holding of the hand thing isn't it you know you're you, you once you've now seen it there and you've seen it up there and I've we've discussed it you're that's giving you hopefully the reassurance that you can can press on and it's it gives working. you gives you something you're not yeah. searching in the dark anymore you've got something to focus on and, and progress forward from there okay sounds good Does that makes sense yep yeah, makes perfect sense to me it's just those are the key ingredients for you to, to get this right right then dan so what have i learned today or what have they learned today yeah so i think i think it's all about how you use your body just that little bit better um what you were tending to do and a common fault with lots of players is that you had the club you were leading everything with the club head yeah and actually you've got a which is great in the backswing you know it leads from the club head working up through the shaft good, the the body. everything looked tidy you got it in a really nice spot but then on the way down you wanted to then lead again with the arms and most male golfers are very top half driven you know it's all this at the top and that's why you see lots of players coming over the top a lot of the times so they lead with their shoulders they lead with their top half which causes them some problems well you're no different you know you're leading with the club head and then by the time you get to the ball the last thing that comes through is your turn of the ball yeah. yeah and you think about your shot putting days you think about traveling all these things if we want to generate power we've got to drive with the lower half and then the last bit that kind of comes through is then the, the extension of the arms as they come through the shot and that's the important bit for you giving yourself more freedom more space your power is not going to come from your hands and arms no your power is going to come from your core. You could see that in the numbers that we got. You yeah, go yeah. from 69 mile an hour, we picked you up seven mile an hour by just trying to use a different type of transition and it hasn't, to shot. Well, no, I look sweaty in it now, but it's quite hot inside one of these. Yeah, it's a hot day. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like I put any more power in. No. It doesn't feel like I put any more pressure into my body to get to that point. You said that you felt like you had more freedom. Yeah. And that is exactly it. You've got to lose control to gain control. I think that's the title of the video, Freedom. Yeah, freedom. Because you've got to have, you can't keep steering the golf ball down, down there, okay? Um, you've got to let it go at some point. I spend all my time trying to guide the ball into a position yeah. where I really should just be, well, let's just say going for it. 100%. So you've got a, key, a few key points there to work on. Yeah. Um, there are a few other areas that we're going to have to of look course, at over time, time. Um, but at the moment let's just focus on those key points, let's try and get you a little bit more speed into the shot, give you that freedom, let's take away the pressure points in your body yep. that are going to allow you not to pick up any injuries along mm -hmm. the way, um, and try and use your bigger muscles more, that's, that's the key to this today. Okay. So, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much to Dan Hendrickson. My for pleasure John, as just always. Being such a sport, allowing me to come and film as well as give me the lessons. No, no problem. It's brilliant. Yeah. If you don't follow Dan, I really hope you do already, but if you don't follow Dan, you have two channels now. Yeah, we've got DHG, which is the main kind of vlogging channel, which you'll see maybe our Sunday morning show as well okay. on. And then we've got DHG Plus, which is in work in progress, and this is a, to do with more coaching reviews and things like that. So lots of content. Yeah, and, and our channel kind of dovetails in between on the various days at the moment. So again, you get in very interesting comment and you get content, you get great content, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, please hit the notification bell, do all those things, and obviously for Dan as well, and follow my adventures in golf wherever they may be. See you on a golf course very soon, and hopefully we'll come back and do some other lessons with Dan Absolutely. on some other different ideas. See you again. Bye, everybody.